Looking at this passage, how can we live the life God has called us to live? How are we living that life and how can we live that life? And so we've been looking at it. We continue this morning. We won't get finished this morning. Uh, Stephen's going to try to help us. Some people are freezing. Yes. <laughs> Some people are hot. You know how to, do you know how to, to, to take care of that? You come early. Then you get exactly the seat that you want that's just right. <laughs> right up here on the front row, it's just great right here where nobody wants to sit except me. <laughs> so when we continue this morning, um, we won't finish this morning, we'll finish next week, but living the life that you are called to live. Paul says, I want to know Christ and I want to know him in every dimension. And when Paul says that, what he means, it's, it's not, it, it is, yes, knowing Christ, but it's also how, how Christ has lived in my life, what my life is like, every part of it. I'm called to be a father, a mother, a, a business person, a helper, all of this. This is, part of, this is part of knowing Christ and living the life that Christ has called us to live. And for everyone, it's a little bit different, but it's good but it's good. And Paul says, we look in slide two, says, I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. This is part of the goal and this is part of the, this is part of the pathway as well. And Paul says, Christ has grabbed hold of me and I grab hold of, I'm striving to grab hold of him. Every one of us sitting here this morning, Christ has grabbed hold of you. You may not feel it very much. Do you feel grabbed hold of this morning? Some of us feel it. Some of us don't. We just kind of say, well, I'm kind of here, a little bit like a jellyfish. But Christ has, it's true. It's true. We're like that sometimes. But brothers and sisters, it does not matter really what we feel like. Christ Jesus, if you are his child this morning, he has grabbed hold of you. And in grabbing hold of you, He has purposes for your life. There are things that He wants to do in you. There are things that He wants to do through you. How are those things going to happen? How are those things going to be worked out? Believe me, God is not just going to come in and grab hold of you and say, Now, I am going to work in your life and I am going to do all of these things. God cooperates with you as you cooperate with Him. Brothers and sisters, that's the only way we are going to live the lives that God has called us to live. That is the great thing about being a Christian. God's not going to make you do anything. He's not. God's not going to force you to do anything. God's not that type of God. He doesn't work that way in your life. And that's the great thing about freedom in Christ. There is freedom. There's freedom to choose. The responsibility of that is that God is going to work in your life to the extent that you cooperate with Him and no more. No more, brothers and sisters. That's it. And so as Jesus grabs hold of you, you cooperate with Him by doing, as Paul says, by grabbing hold of Him as well. Grabbing hold of Him. That's how it works. And that's something that we can understand, isn't it? It's a, it's a physical expression. And it's a, it's a physical understanding of Jesus grabbing hold of us. And our response to Him was, Jesus, I'm going to grab hold of you too. And our grip isn't always very strong. And sometimes it gets a little bit loose, doesn't it? And sometimes we feel like we're slipping. But the great thing is, that Jesus never weakens in his grip. He's going to hold on to you. And brothers and sisters, if you will hold on back, everything that he has planned for your life will be worked out. Things that you don't yet know. Things that you aren't even expecting. Jesus says, you grab, you reach forward and hold on to me. I'm going to hold on to you. And wonderful things are going to be worked out in your life in every dimension. So this is what Paul says, and it's what you and I should be saying as well, and it's found in this passage. So we looked at two things already. We'll see how far we get this morning. We won't, I, we won't get all the way to the end, but we'll remember what the first thing was. If we're going to live the life God has called us to live, what's the first thing we're going to have to have? We're going to have to have a dissatisfaction, a dissatisfaction, a good dissatisfaction that says, I'm not content with where I am. If you are content 
to live as you live right now. If you say, I'm a Christian and that's kind of good enough. I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm not like other people. I'm, I'm, I'm a, I give my tithes. I'm doing good things. And so I'm kind of happy. I'm just going to kind of go this way. Then you will continue to walk with God, but you will not live the life God has called you to live. And I'm not criticizing or condemning you this morning. I'm just telling you the truth this morning. God has more for you. And one of the first steps is we look at ourselves and we say, as Paul says, I know enough to know that I need to know more. <laughs> I'm mature enough to know I'm not yet fully mature. I've grown enough to know I need to grow more. I've gone down this road far enough to know I need to go further. And when we reach that place, then we're at a place that God can help us. Because if we're content where we are, then God can't, He's not going to make us move. And we just can say, well, I'm, I'm pretty good. I remember what I was. And we can look back and we say, wow, I was so bad before. I was so this and I was so that. And if we just look back and compare ourselves with how we used to be, it's very easy to be content with how we are. But brothers and sisters, that is not the comparison. That's not what we look at. Instead of looking back, we look ahead and we say, Jesus, I'm not fully like you yet. Jesus, there are still areas of my life where I haven't measured up. I'm not very lovely in some areas of my life. Can you say that about your own life? I can say that about my life. And so what we do instead of looking back to say, oh, I'm better than I was, we instead look forward and we say, Jesus, but I'm not yet what you want me to be. And that keeps us going forward. So there's a dissatisfaction. What was the second thing we looked at? Second thing, we looked at devotion. And that devotion is the idea of one thing. That is the idea of having a priority. What is the most important thing? Do you remember how Paul starts this passage? In verse 10, he says, I what? I want to know Christ. And I want to know him in this way, and in this way, in this way. A lot of people only want to know Christ in victory. Right? Me. That's me. I just want to, I want to know Christ as an overcomer. I want to know Christ as being, being um, top in everything. I want to know Christ in all of this. That's not what Paul said. Paul said, I want to know Christ and the power of His resurrection. Ooh, I want to know that, don't you? But then he says, and the fellowship of sharing in His suffering. That's part of it as well. We won't always jump from mountaintop to mountaintop. There will be sometimes that things that we pray for will not happen because it's not part of God's plan. It's not part of God's will in our lives. And there will be some doors that shut. And we pray, God open that door, God open that door. And that door may not open. But God has another door. God has a different door. And Paul says, I want to know Christ in all of these ways. It's the one thing and that meant that everything else that was surrounding Paul in his life, all of the other parts of Paul's life, they fit with that. And he knew, okay, here's the priority. As I was preparing yesterday and, and I was moving forward and I was looking at that, I came across something that struck my heart. And I don't know if it'll strike your heart, but I want to share it with you anyhow as I, as I was preparing. Paul says, I haven't achieved it yet, but this one thing I do. And because Paul knew what his one thing was, everything else fit into place. And so I have this question for you this morning. Are you giving up what you want most for what you want now? Ooh, ouch. Seriously, ouch. Are you giving up what you want most I want Christ most. God, I want to know you. Lord, I'm your child. I want to walk with you. God, I want to be what you want me to be. Is that number one? That when we get that focus, God, I want you. I want you. And however that fits in my life, every part of my life, God, you're first. Are we giving up what we want most for what we want now? And that struck my heart because there are a lot of things I want now. Yeah, you too? 
I want this and I want this and I want this and I want that to work out. And they're all of these now things that really press our hearts, don't they? They really press us. I want this and I want that. Are you giving up what you want most for what you want now? Because if God is first in your life, then all of the now things will also fit with that. It'll fit with that. And so am I giving up what I want most for what I want now? And it's a matter, it's a matter of priorities. So number one, dissatisfaction. Number two, devotion. What about number three? Let's look at what Paul says next. And Paul says, I don't mean to say I've achieved these things, but I focus on this one thing. We got that. That's dissatisfaction. That's devotion. And then he says, forgetting the past and straining towards what is what? Ahead. So forgetting the past, straining towards what is ahead. What is Paul talking about here? And here Paul is talking about direction. He's talking about direction. So first one, dissatisfaction, devotion. Number three, direction, direction. I want to ask you something this morning. In your life, in your life, what is the direction of your life? Think about it for just a minute, really. Just kind of think. What fills your mind most of the time? Where are you spending most of your energy? What's the direction of your life? I can't answer that for you. I, I really mean that. What's the direction of your life? Is your, is your life, are you straining forward? Are you looking forward? Are you moving forward? And are you forgetting what is past? Think about your life just a minute. Let me share something with you that happened to me this week. Um, and it has nothing to do with anything that's going on in Hong Kong, so you can't construe anything. But uh, something had come up um, in, in my life and in my situation and it frustrated me. I can't tell you how much it frustrated me. My heart got so heavy this week. And I was driving to church Thursday morning. And, and, and as I often, as I usually do when I'm driving, if the traffic's not too bad, I'm praying. Um, that, that's a lot of, you know, it's kind of, that's kind of my quiet time. I don't even listen to music a lot um, in the car. I really, a lot of times, I'm just using that time to pray if I can and, uh, um, and if it's, traffic's not too bad. So I was praying as I was going along and I was thinking about this because I had a phone conversation. It had come up and I was so frustrated because it was something that was unfair, it wasn't right, and it hadn't been dealt with, it hadn't been handled. And my heart got, was just so heavy, it really was, and it was in my mind, and I was trying to pray, and I'll be really honest with you, I was praying, but you know what I was praying? I was praying about it. I wasn't praying about me. Because <laughs> I was right. I was praying about it, and them, and that situation. I was so frustrated, because it wasn't fair, and it wasn't right, I was just praying. And my heart was just getting tighter and tighter and heavier, heavier and full and more and more full. And suddenly, <gasps> I'm so thankful. It was like the Holy Spirit just sort of <laughs> hit me. I, I really mean that. I, I really mean that. It was like he caught my attention. And all of a sudden, I realized what I was doing and how I was praying and where I was looking. Because what I was doing was looking at the past. Because what I was thinking about was something that took place a long time ago. It had happened. It w couldn't be changed. There was nothing I could do about it. It was from then. There was, I had no power whatsoever to change the situation or the person. None at all. And yet my heart was just, it was just like my heart was sinking. And I, as, I, as, he, as the Holy Spirit tapped me and got my attention, I realized, and, I, and I'm, so, I'm so thankful He helped me. Brothers and sisters, if you... The Holy Spirit will help you pray. Did you know that? When you sometimes feel like such a wimp in prayer and in your thoughts, the Holy Spirit is just there. I really mean this. It's almost as if He's, he's there waiting and saying, Ask me. Let me help you pray. I, I, I'm not being disrespectful to the Holy Spirit. I really mean that. The Holy Spirit wants to help you pray. That's what it says in Romans 8. He wants to help you pray. Because you know what? Prayer is tough. Did you know that? It's hard. It's hard. It's not easy. And so the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of prayer, the Holy Spirit who knows all about those things in the spiritual dimension, He is right there waiting for you to say, Oh, Holy Spirit, help me. Waiting. Is, does He have an opening to help you pray and to help you get through it? 
and I'm so glad that he got my attention. And I said, oh, yes. And I, re I just said, oh, God. And it was the Holy Spirit's help because I'm not that great. It was the Holy Spirit's help. I was like, oh, God. And I'll be really honest with you. Are you ready for my eloquent prayer? I'm so eloquent. Oh, God, I don't want this in my heart. How eloquent is that? <laughs> that, it, that? That was my prayer. God, I don't want this in my heart. God, I don't want this to be a burden in my heart. God, I don't want this to stop me from you and from getting to heaven. I don't want it in my life. And then I went a little bit further and I said, Oh God, and if there's anything else in my life that's going to be a burden, Lord, get it out of my heart. I don't want it. I don't want it. And the Holy Spirit began to help me let go of those things that I was holding on to. I'm right. I have been unfairly treated. This is not right. They were wrong. They should repent. They should say, I'm sorry for doing this to you. You can't do anything about that. Let the Holy Spirit help you. Let it go. Let it go. The unfairness of the past. The grief of the past. The sorrow of the past. The regrets of the past. And we all have regrets. Brothers and sisters, every one of us has regrets. I have regrets. I can't change those things. And you can't. But if you let the Holy Spirit, He will help you let go. And then He will help you put the past in perspective so that it no longer hinders you, so that your direction is no longer this is what happened, good or bad. Instead, your direction will be leaning forward, leaning forward, because that's how you will live the life God has called you to live. You'll be leaning forward. Now, what can God do about the past that you cannot change, that is not right, and that has still not been corrected, because all of us have that. What will God do? He's not going to go back and change the past. God doesn't do that. The past is a past. It's done. It's set in concrete. It's set in stone. <coughs> then why pray? <laughs> why bother? God's not going to change it. Why do we pray? What does God do? He does what he did for Abraham. He does what he did for David. He does what he did for Joseph, who was so unfairly treated, who was thrown in a pit, betrayed by his brothers, sold into slavery, falsely accused, thrown into prison, and forgotten there. And then God brings him out and he sees his brothers again, the ones who did it to him. What does Joseph say? You remember what he said? Think with me. Joseph says, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Praise the Lord. God meant it for good. You, you did it to destroy my life. But God had a plan all along. And brothers and sisters, listen. This is what the Holy Spirit will do with your past. He will help you to see God's hand in that broken past. He will help you to see God's plan in that broken past. He will help you to see God's power in that broken past. And He will give you a perspective on the past that will help you as you move forward. And it will help you to move forward. Joseph could say, oh, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Joseph wasn't looking at the past. Joseph wasn't saying, they did this, 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 and this. Do you know what Joseph was saying? Joseph was leaning forward. Look at that next picture. I love this picture. Joseph was leaning forward. He was forgetting what was behind and he was straining forward to what was ahead. I love this picture. I love this picture. Every one of them straining ahead, straining ahead, forgetting the past and looking at what was ahead. Do you remember a few weeks ago when I was telling you the story of Eric Little? 
um, that wonderful runner. Do you know what some people said about his life? They said that his greatest race was not in the 1924 Paris Olympics. Do you know that? A lot, of, a lot of people said, oh, that's when he won the gold medal. That was the whatever. That was in the movie, you know, The Chariots of Fire. But many who knew him said that was not his greatest race. Do you know what they said his greatest race was? And this was a young man who loved God and served God and ran for God with all of his heart. They said his greatest race was in the Scotland Games when he was running, I think it was the 800 meters. And at some point in the race, Eric Little got tripped up with another runner and he fell in the race. He fell. And all the other runners shoo, kept on running. Nobody else fell except Eric Little. And there he lay on the track. And all the other runners, just like that, were running ahead, far ahead of him, far ahead of him. What did he do? He got up and he forgot what was behind and he strained towards what was ahead and he started running again. He was 20 to 30 yard meters behind the very last competitor. 20 to 30 meters. Is there any way to overcome? He may have been hurt. I don't know if he was hurt when he fell or anything like that. Is there any way to overcome? Is there any way to rent, win a race like that? Surely not. Surely not. 20 meters behind. 30 meters behind. He's fallen. Might as well stop. There's no way to win. You're not going to win. Instead, he started running. And he <coughs> overtook the last competitor. He overtook the next one and the next one, and the next one. And he won that race. After being 20 to 30 meters behind the very last competitor. Kind of a miracle, isn't it? I think God must have helped him do that. In the physical, he did what is described in the spiritual. You forget what's behind, and you strain towards what is behead. Brothers and sisters, I do not know what's in your past. I do not know the failures of your past. You know, we know, some of us we, here at Lighthouse, we know very well about some of the failures. Of, some, some failures are very public, aren't they? Christine Bellow's failure, Juliet's failure. Some of these failures are very public and we know them so well. Other failures are private. Other fallings are private. I don't know. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you get up and you keep on running. You forget the past and you strain towards what is ahead. That's how you're going to live the life God has called you to live. Have you really blown it as a Christian? Really blown it at times. You fell short, you fell, you were weak, you got sidetracked, or you got full of pride about, I did this for God. That's, that's something as well. The Christian who will live the life God has called them to live will be the Christian, not the Christian who never falls and never fails. No such person exists. No such Christian exists. You're looking for that? It's not going to be. The Christian who will live the life God calls him to live is not the perfect Christian that never falls and never fails. It will be the Christian who forgets what is past and instead strains, reaches towards what is ahead. I urge you this morning, determine this morning, God, I forget that. For, forget it. Forget it. I've held on to it too long. It has been a weight and a stone in my heart for too long. Let it go, brothers and sisters. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. You're going to let the past and somebody else keep you from living the life God has called you to live? Doing the work God has called you to do? Why? When God has so much more for you. When God has so much more for me. Get dissatisfied with where you are. Get your goal, Jesus Christ. Stop giving up what you want most for what you want now. 
get up off the racetrack and start running again and forget what is behind and just towards start leaning towards what is ahead and if you're struggling with it and say oh Holy Spirit help me and the Holy Spirit says I've just been waiting for you to ask me I'm gonna help you let's pray because you know what that's how the Holy Spirit does it he prays with us did you know that Jesus prays for us Holy Spirit prays with us and now we're gonna close in prayer it's time to stop We'll finish up next week. But this is a good place to stop, isn't it? Because I don't know about you, because if you're expecting perfect Pastor Jennifer, you're in the wrong church. Perfect Pastor Renee, you're in the wrong church. And you're not going to find one anywhere. But there's perfect Jesus, perfect Holy Spirit. And He's going to help you keep going if you will say, I'm going to forget it. God help me. Holy Spirit help me pray. Lord, we come to you.